Welcome to the Start Me Up Toolkit. I'm Karen Ross, a business coach and intuitive healer, ex-stress junkie, ex-corporate woman, here to help you find some new ways, in fact, the three fastest ways you haven't heard of yet to get out of the stress cycle and into a new rhythm. And good on you for taking time, claiming time to do this for yourself, to watch this video, to uh, check out the ebook and so on, because I know well from my own experience when you're busy and stressed, it can be really tricky to find space and actually claim time to do that. So we're going to dive in and give you some of these insights and strategies you can start using straight away. Let's go. So what has brought you here? Are you finding yourself uh, too stressed too often for your own liking? Are you finding you're uh, just not as cool, calm and collected as you would like to be? Or perhaps there are things that you've been wanting to change and habits you've wanting, been wanting to break for quite some time. And for a lot of people, and perhaps uh, you feel the same, uh, you may have tried a lot of things, tried to change habits, read a lot of books, and still you don't feel like you've solved it. That's something we hear often from our clients. And I've been there too. I know how frustrating that can be. I spent a lot of my 20s wanting to feel more in charge of my emotions, but I did not know how. And when I was 25, I headed off on what many of us antipodeans call our OE, our overseas experience. And I actually remembered the other day when I was flying into Frankfurt, we were about an hour out of the city and we had a thunderstorm. It was really major turbulence. It was pretty scary for someone like me who wasn't a seasoned traveler at that point. And I was just gripping my armrest for dear life. And eventually, of course, we came up out of that and, and came up out of the clouds. And I had one of those life-defining aha moments. And I've never forgotten it, but it took me a little while to work out what it actually meant for me in my life. And so I'm going to share with you more on that later. But I was very lucky to land an amazing job in Eastern Europe. It started with a six-month contract and then turned into a two-year role in adventure. And I was working as a learning and development consultant for KPMG, one of the big international accounting firms. And it was a dream job for someone like me who'd wanted to travel from a very young age. And I was traveling to different offices, to, uh, training staff and managers. And sometimes um, I'd be in a different city every week. It was a really amazing opportunity. But I wasn't always very happy. And sometimes I was very low. And after the glamour and novelty of traveling for work wore off, which it does, I was also getting a bit stressed and that um, was kind of going up, not down. And I remember arriving in Warsaw one Sunday afternoon and, you know, I should have been excited to be in a new city and I was meeting one of the partners of the firm for dinner, a lovely Canadian guy, but I sat in my hotel room sad, lonely and anxious. And another thing that was happening is that I was running a lot of training sessions for different groups of people every week. And that was going quite well, except that uh, quite often when a participant would ask me a question, and usually, you know, sometimes I had an answer for it and sometimes I didn't, but just about regardless of that, I would freak out. And I remember a particular day in Budapest with uh, a particularly tough audience, I must admit, and someone asked me for clarification on something. And I just got that feeling in my body, that, oh, you know, that feeling that just, ugh, horrible. My mind went blank, my mouth went dry, and, you know, a perfectly simple situation suddenly felt like a nightmare. And after that, it started happening nearly every time I was called on to ask, answer a question. And I just wasn't feeling in control of my responses, my reactions. I didn't know how to make myself feel better beyond you know, going for a walk or calling a friend or taking a few deep breaths. And so sometimes I was kind of picking myself up again, but it wouldn't last uh, for very long. And I was over it. I was doing a good job, but I knew I could be doing a great job. And I wasn't enjoying myself nearly as much as I wanted to be. 
I started searching, I read a lot of books, I saw a life coach, I wrote my life vision, uh, and I was still not really finding the answers that were going to make a sustained uh, difference over time. And then I found out what I needed to know, and I started to take charge of my internal state, I started clearing out the emotional cobwebs, and to find my happy place. It was really good. <laughs> And now I'm doing work I totally love, which is richly rewarding, often on a daily basis. My business, which turned 10 years old in 2015, continues to grow. I love being in front of people, speaking and presenting, and have great fun bringing humour to what I do, although it's often pretty cheesy. <laughs> and I make plans for my future, but I also enjoy where I am. I live in the moment and make the most of life. Uh, I'm human, of course, I still find that a big to-do list can flick me into overwhelm, but I know now how to take care of how I'm feeling before I plunge in, and I continue to uh, apply for myself what I teach, and I've learned to choose what's right for me to get in charge of my emotional state and to be happy in my life. And sometimes I imagine, you know, what would it have been like had I known then what I know now? when I spent those years in Europe. And I want to share with you today the three things that I think have made the biggest difference. The three things that are the difference that makes the difference to being more in charge of yourself. Because imagine firing on all cylinders at work, having clarity of mind and offering fantastic ideas and solutions. Imagine being able to speak up easily and to be able to articulate yourself brilliantly with your team. Imagine being able to inspire the daylights out of your team to perform more effectively, be more passionate. Imagine getting home at the end of the day with enough fuel in the tank for those people around you and the things you love to do. It took me a while to figure this stuff out, uh, but now I can help you fast track all that research and give you these key insights right now. And there's nothing mysterious about them, they're incredibly simple. A lot of it's really about simply knowing how you work inside and what you can do to take control. Now there are these three insights I want to share with you and three steps. And the first insight is that you are in charge. You tr truly are. And I remember that feeling of not knowing this. And I really can uh, assure you it's true and I'm going to show you very shortly uh, how I know this and share with you some leading edge neuroscience to uh, explain. Uh, to be the flow is to choose how you want to be feeling, to decide even if people around me are stressed I'm going to feel calm, cool and collected because I can and I want to. And to make your state the most important thing in your day. How you feel makes the biggest difference to how you perform and experience a situation. So I'm going to issue you with what I call an outrage, well, what most other people tell me is an outrageous invitation to do that. And to share with you three easy steps. These are, this is a 30 second strategy to transform your state. It is extraordinarily simple and brilliantly effective. So before we get into all of that juicy stuff, let's start with this first insight. You are in charge. And, you know, I realized that if something feels impossible, it usually means you just don't have enough information yet. So please let me share with you what I have learned. And I want to introduce you to your amazing mind, but particularly share with you one thing that is... Uh, a fundamental thing to understand about how our mind and body work and this is also one of the most fascinating and on one level how our mind how our brain works is not as complicated as you may think now let's face it if we were to explore everything there is to know about this whole your brain and how you this amazing system works that could get very complicated and would probably take hours right so here I'm going to distill down for you the simple nuts and bolts of your neurology and mind-body system so you can learn fundamental truths about yourself here and to understand particularly why we feel so stuck in our patterns and reactions and how you can make changes 
faster than you think. And what I'm about to share with you here is something that I show every client I work with, usually in the first session, because I want them to know how they can make changes for themselves. And I realized how important this knowledge was when I worked with a woman some years ago now. It would have been, gosh, at least seven years ago. And she'd come to see me because she had a, a pretty dramatic fear of water, a real a phobia of water. And she came to uh, her, so she, I'd seen her once for a two-hour session, and then she came to me for her second follow-up, her second session, which was her follow-up. And uh, the, the problem was solved, and she was feeling really great. And she said, you know, wow, this is just amazing, Karen. Uh, you must have a wand in your back pocket. And I instantly thought, uh oh, no, I don't. And so I proceeded to explain to her what I'm about to show you. And at the end of that conversation, she said, Oh, so I'm the wand. And I said, Yes, yes, you are the wand. So uh, here we go, folks. This is the you are the wand story. So if we are talking about uh, the brain here, uh, you're probably familiar already with this idea that we have both conscious and unconscious brain function. It's probably familiar to you. And we're going to use the word unconscious here, and some people would use the term subconscious, and they're kind of interchangeable in this context. Now, what's less known, it's not exactly household information yet, is that in terms of the overall functioning of your whole system, one is much bigger than the other, or one is much smaller than the other. So which way around is it? Is it that the conscious function is bigger than the unconscious, or vice versa? What's your instinct about that? And so everyone has their own take on this, depending on what information they've come across. But here's the deal. The, we have uh, about 2% of what is going on at a conscious level. Uh, in the brain, or two percent of what's going on is conscious, and the rest is unconscious. And so this is usually a much bigger difference than a lot of people expect. We uh, process two thousand bits per second at this conscious level, which means about five to nine chunks of information. Meanwhile, at an unconscious level, we are processing much, much faster like try 400 billion bits per second fast. So sometimes people freak out a little bit at this point because they're kind of going, wow, Karen, we're talking about how to get more in charge of myself and how I can use my brain on purpose here, and you're telling me my conscious function only accounts for 2% of what's going on. You know, how is this good news? But the trick is that it isn't about being able to consciously control and change everything. It's about understanding how these two work together and how you can influence and change what's running unconsciously. So let me tell you more about what these parts of the brain do and then we'll talk about uh, being able to change these things. So at this conscious level is where we do our logic and our rationalization. We can uh, make sense of things and reason and uh, reason out situations. It is where our creativity and our imagination come from. So our conscious head brain is, is how we come up with ideas and, and think of things that are possible or impossible. And where we have our free will, so your ability to choose when you go to a cafe, are you going to have a coffee or a tea or a juice? You get to choose at this conscious level what you want. Now, at the unconscious level, there are two uh, two things happening. So this is where we essentially have our uh, automatic default patterns running, our, uh, our programming. And, and this is happening right now, by the way. So while you're consciously looking at the screen or perhaps listening to my voice or both, uh, you're um, breathing just in case you hadn't noticed, and hopefully that's true, by the way. Uh, you're breathing, your eyes are being kept moist. Blood is circulating through your body, as is oxygen. The thymus gland in your chest is coordinating your immune system. Your pancreas is storing red blood cells. All of these amazing things are running unconsciously and automatically. While you're thinking about what I'm saying and perhaps wondering what this means for you making changes for yourself. 
And all of that is running without you needing to know how, how it runs. It's just working beautifully. Isn't that just amazing? Uh, we have what I call good programming at this level, one of the two types of programming. And all the things I just mentioned are examples of that. But so is your ability to butter toast in the morning. And I'm guessing that when you do that, you don't have to stop and think about which end of the knife to hold, right? You, you just know which end to pick up and which end to put into the butter, and away you go. Because it's just an automatic known skill, and you just do it. The same thing when you drive a car somewhere, you know what the pedals do, you know what the sticks on the sides of the wheel are for, you don't have to stop and figure it all out. It would take a very long time to get anywhere if we had to do that, right? So our brain go, learns um, consciously first, and that's why we had to really concentrate when we first learn to drive, right? And then it becomes unconscious competence where we do it automatically. So a lot of this programming that runs is extremely useful and amazing that we can do it so automatically and easily. Then we have the second type of programming that I have a very technical term for, and I call it the dodgy programming. And this means the things that are not so useful. So it qualifies as dodgy if you wish you didn't do it by default, and it, it, it's not a positive kind of experience for you. Uh, and this includes things like stress or a short temper or overwhelm, anxiety, phobias, allergies, depression, asthma, uh, trauma or PTSD, nail biting, you name it. So anything that we find ourselves doing or feeling that we really wish we didn't do, but we find very difficult to change or stop. And these are running in our neural pathways. So our neural nets get together a lot. They're really into community and they create neural networks. And they don't physically touch. They're actually joined by uh, chemicals called neurotransmitters often uh, dubbed the chemicals of emotion. And they determine the feeling we're experiencing when we're activating those pathways. So when I'm talking about stress with a client, what we're talking about is we're probably they're probably activating an adrenaline network. And so that adrenaline is firing in the body and in the neural pathways, and then they're getting that feeling in their body. And uh, Conversely, if you are sitting in front of the TV and watching something very funny and perhaps laughing your head off, that lovely good feeling in your body is serotonin. And so you're activating in a, a serotonin network in your brain at that time. So if our brain is uh, running out all of these programs at, at this unconscious level, then it makes sense that we would want to be able to make changes at that level, right? And like, look at it like this. I mean, you've heard of the 80-20 rule, right? Well, how about the 98-2 rule? So when we feel really stuck in a pattern, and I have often have clients saying to me, oh, God, I can't believe I can't change this. How stupid. And I say, mm, no, uh, there's nothing stupid about it. It's just that it's wired in. It's like you've got the software installed on your computer, and you keep wanting it to run a different program. And, you know, your computer can't do anything better than what it's got installed already. So uh, I hope it might make you feel just slightly better to know that, you know, if you could change it at the drop of a hat, you probably wouldn't by now. And the deal is, is that when we're wired for a certain response, sometimes we uh, aren't going to change that response until we change the wiring, so to speak. So this is where uh, being able to create change at this level becomes very, very useful. And the way we do this with our clients is we use a wonderful methodology called Neuro Linguistic Programming, NLP. And NLP is the study of excellence and includes a suite of techniques that help us make changes to stuck patterns like emotional responses and phobias and trauma and so on as well as teaching uh, how to communicate brilliantly and how people learn and make decisions and think and so on. So it's a wonderful field of information I'm going to talk about a little bit later. And so when we are working with a client, uh, here's kind of what it looks like. So uh, we might be working with someone, and you may or may not uh, relate to this, who let's say that they are finding themselves getting pretty o easily overwhelmed by everything they've got to do, uh, the side of their full inbox or all of the papers piled on their desk, 
and that not only is it when they're actually there and looking at it, but even if they just think about all that work piled up, they get this feeling, and it's just that foggy head, can't think straight, don't know what to do first, uh, tension in the body, heart rate goes up, all those uh, lovely things that uh, can leave us feeling very unresourceful. And so what's happening at that moment is the moment we see what we are having to do or we're thinking about it, we go down a super highway in our brain and light up that old pathway and get that yucky feeling, right? And there's no time to think about it. It's just boom, there it is. And what some what what people find sometimes is that they might be able to, at a conscious level, kind of calm themselves down and ease their body and relax a little bit, and that helps uh, reduce the feeling. And there are other times when all the rationalising in the world is not making a blind bit of difference to what's going on. And you can see why, right? Because the response is running at this unconscious level. Um, and it's fired up in the brain and the body's responded and it's kind of like boom, there you are. So the deal is, is that we can make changes to these responses. And so when we are guiding a client through a particular um, few steps to, to make that change, here's basically what's happening. So we're able to pull the plug out of the wall on that feeling by helping the brain to make adjustments. Uh, collapses that super highway, so to speak. It re lets the neural pathways reorganize themselves so the brain can find different paths to go down. And that smiley face is not there by accident because what our brain is very clever at doing is finding the path of least resistance. It doesn't go off looking for another adrenaline network. It, it instinctively looks for the most resourceful responses. We're kind of, you know, designed like that. It's pretty clever. And so when this person is then in the situation in future and they're thinking about what's uh, what has to be done or they're seeing their inbox, they can feel calmer and clearer and make fresh decisions. Now, the term for this, uh, the brain's ability to make these changes is neuroplasticity. So this is what neuroscientists call our brain's ability to change itself. And it's referring to the fact that the brain is plastic, it's pliable, that we uh, can make these adjustments. So if you're wondering, you know, well, you know, I can see how somebody else might change that, but, um, you know, well, I've tried lots of things. Just check for yourself. Have you really uh, had an experience of being able to reorganize the way that software is installed? because it's, it may be that it's just that's not what you've done so far. Now, there is fascinating reading on the brain's ability to change itself, and so see the back of your ebook for suggested further reading if you want to know more. So let's talk about how we can influence these patterns. And there's kind of four key ways, and the first is through our conscious awareness. And this is uh, really relevant because... When you, when you know that there's something that's not working for you, whether it's your reaction to a certain person at work or, um, or that you find yourself getting, uh, yeah, easily stressed by a couple of situations that keep coming up, the minute you are aware of how you're responding, you get more in charge because you get to choose whether you keep doing it or whether you start to make changes. So don't underestimate the uh, power of, of knowing that there's something there you want to change. And for some people, they get really frustrated about that because they just want to change it. And I really get that. Um, but the deal is, is that until you noticed it, you weren't in a position to change it. So it is a pretty exciting place to get to. The second thing here is to, and, and you will be familiar with this idea, that if we do something repeatedly, we can program habit in or we can program it out. And uh, there's various information about how long that takes, and uh, I hear uh, 40 days is a pretty common one, and I think the key here is that we're giving our brain enough repetition that it's got a chance to lay down new neural pathways and connect with other neural create new networks, make new connections. So essentially repetition is one of the ways we can do change. The third one here is uh, 
is through a dramatic event or emotion. And there are lots of examples of this. And the way this works uh, in a more uh, unfortunate way, if you like, is when people experience a dramatic situation and then feel traumatized about it afterwards. And it's because they've experienced a certain situation or place such as um, a tsunami and then they uh, ex experience the emotional feeling of the situation and what that puts them through or what they see other people suffering from and then those two things get linked together in the brain and that is the structure of trauma. Uh, so that can happen in a millisecond and, um, and the good news is that as, as quickly as that can be programmed in, it can also be programmed out in just a few minutes. And that is one of the particularly brilliant things that NLP helps us do. Uh, number four is um, where a lot of our work comes in, and this is about being able to change the pattern using specific change techniques, um, including those that come from NLP. And there are other wonderful modalities that help do this as well, things like Psych K and uh, various energetic healing and so on. And the reality, the reality is that when you have the right tools, you can have fast lasting change. And this is what I finally realized and discovered after my journey of trying to get more in charge for myself. And that it is easier than you think. You know, it's, it seems like when we're cleaning up our old baggage or getting out of old emotional patterns that it should be kind of long, laborious, painful process. And while we may go through some of those dark nights of the soul and, uh, and life not, uh, is not always easy, being able to heal and change these patterns is much more gentle and easier than you think. And that was an amazing revelation for me. What we want to help you do is to get the instruction manual for your brain and therefore your, therefore your brilliance. And, you know, it can be an absolute revelation to be able to change a pattern that you've been defaulting into for so long. And I remember this lovely, passionate, very dedicated woman had spent so much of her life feeling stressed, and not only at work, but also at home. And it was a real life changer for her to be able to get out of those old patterns. So let's dive into this um, second insight because hopefully you can see how you really are in charge and, and and you can take charge more and more easily and so being the flow is something that becomes uh, part of this journey because what I've realized is that whether we give ourselves permission to feel good and choose how we want to be living will often determine how easily and quickly we actually experience that in our life and I remember in a beautiful novel I read a few years ago by Elif Shafak, who's a Turkish author. Uh, one of her characters said, don't go with the flow, be the flow. And that resonated with me for such a long time because we're in a very uh, stress-crazed society and uh, life is gathering speed constantly. And it can be very easy to feel that we just have to be at the mercy of what's happening around us. And this insight helps me remember to just be the flow and, and to choose how I want to be feeling regardless of what's happening around me. I remember working with a woman a, a couple of years ago who was leading a team in a, actually in an accounting firm. And it was March. And that means month end and year end for her team and the whole business in fact. It's a very busy time for accountants. And it's kind of expected that everybody's going to be stressed. So you just kind of have to brace yourself and get on with it. And her and I talked about this idea of being the flow. And she suddenly realized that she didn't have to experience this annual mission uh, that she went through in such a stressful way. And so she really intentionally decided to feel uh, much calmer and more grounded and to just simply do what she could with the time she had. And so you can imagine that made a real difference to her and it also made a real difference to her team because 
and how we're being will always cascade down through our team and the people around us. And when I came to this realization for myself, it was just about realizing how unenjoyable my day was when I was stressed and um, feeling uh, burdened by everything I had to do. It's really unfun. And so I really wanted to become um, the flow for myself. And I, I therefore really lowered my acceptance levels of feeling stressed. Um, and I think that if you are prepared to feel stressed and uncomfortable, you won't be so made of, motivated to change it. And so, uh, yeah, this is about deciding how do you want to feel and really owning that. And here's a really good reason why. Because stress is not a performance state. When we go into stress, it's really a polite word for the fight-flight response or fear. And blood and oxygen flow out of our head and heart into our arms and legs to prepare us to fight or fly. It's a survival instinct. And the problem with this is that if you are sitting in a meeting and you want to be uh, really articulate with this client or be able to solve the challenges that have come up in the meeting, you probably want some of those resources that are out in your arms and legs right then to be up in your head, would you not? Uh, we are really asking the wrong parts of our body to be available when we're in a situation like that. I've worked with a lot of parents around having more harmony at home work time. Even then, being able to be in a nice, cool, clear thinking state makes a difference. I have a number of clients who are barristers and, and lawyers, and they have lots of situations where they need to be feeling very calm and clear and uh, alert to what's occurring, but not in a fight flight kind of way. Uh, a lot of the business owners I work with, same thing. So uh, they know now that stress is not a performance state and that has lowered their tolerance. They are now much less tolerant of feeling stressed. They accept their stress levels need to, you know, they want them to be lower. And we see this in sport a lot. So I'm often talking about athletes with uh, my business clients because they're a very good example of peak performers who really think about how their mindset is affecting their game and there's some really interesting research about this from uh, looking at Olympic medal winners so uh, athletes who have won Olympic medals and they were looking at two sets of athletes one who one set of people who had won one medal and another set of athletes who had won multiple medals. And they were looking at what was the difference between them. And it turned out there were several differences. And one of those was around what the athlete was focusing on, paying attention to during competition. So while they were on the field or on the track or in the water, what was their attention on? And those people who had won one medal said that they were focusing on the end game, on the title, the prize, the the winner, uh, what they were going to win. Uh, that was their, their focus. And, you know, that sounds pretty reasonable, right? Of course, you would want to be focusing on what you're trying to achieve. And I'm sure all athletes have a sense of what they're there to achieve. But that's not what the other group were looking at or focusing on during competition. What they said they were doing is that they were present in that moment to exactly what they were doing in that moment. They were right there on that part of the track, fully in their body, and they often use, uh, many of them use the words flow state. They were in a flow state and simply immersed in the moment. And so you can see that your state and being in a resourceful state is really the difference that makes the difference. So a very good reason to be the flow and to really choose how you want to be feeling. So that was our second insight to brilliance and here is your third making your state the most important thing in your day. 
So this is a really outrageous invitation because here, here it goes. This is what I'm going to invite you to do. Is to make your state, how you're feeling in any moment in time, the most important thing in your day. And so I mean ahead of your uh, partner, your children, your boss, your team, your clients, your deadlines, your dry cleaning, everything. And I have groups of people looking at me in sheer horror at the idea of this. And one of the first things they're worried about is, yeah, but what about those people? They need me. And here's what they realize is that if you can take 30 seconds or two minutes in your day, sometimes several times in the day, to improve your state, to feel more relaxed in your body or to be thinking more clearly, to be breathing more completely, which really does help circulate oxygen to your brain and make your neurons fire more effectively. <laughs> you can be doing that. You then bring your most resourceful self to all of those people and all of those situations. And so it's almost like, can you afford to not do this, really? So I'm going to give you a very practical way of doing this in a moment. And uh, what we've been talking about is, is really being the flow and choosing how you want to feel. And you have probably noticed times where what I'm saying is true for you. So you've probably noticed where perhaps you've been had one of the, those moments where you were out walking or running or you were in the shower or you were on the edge of wakefulness or um, falling asleep and you had one of those aha moments. You know, where suddenly something just pops into your mind and you've suddenly solved something you've been trying to figure out. Um, all day, or you suddenly remember something you've been trying to recall for two days, and there it is suddenly. And people are sometimes surprised by this, but I say, well, of course, this is basic biology. The deal is, is that when you're relaxed, when you feel good, you think better. It's how our brain works. It is why the uh, when children are learning, the best thing we can do for them is to help them relax and feel good about learning and about themselves. The first thing we would teach a child when we're um, helping them improve their spelling or something else. And this is how you can more easily access your own natural brilliance, is to just make how you feel the most important thing so that you can feel good and then think better in all the situations you have in mind. So let me show you how to make this work more easily for you in your day. And I'm going to share these three steps with you called ACE. This is your 30 second strategy to transform your state. And so here's how it works. Your three steps are around awareness, choice and to exchange your state. So awareness means to catch yourself as soon as you start to feel less than resourceful, whether it's feeling stressed or angry or impatient, or whatever it might be. And this takes a, a little bit of practice uh, because we are mostly used to pushing through this. This is the difference between top athletes and a lot of business people. Um, top athletes know they can't afford to do that. If you've ever watched a final of Wimbledon, you will see that it is the uh, the the tennis player on the court, it is often a mental uh, win in the end. Have they got the metal to, to last the distance and get that final shot in? So we just need to get um, uh, more ruthless about how we feel and to catch it as soon as we can. And uh, Carl Jung said that until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. So this is about increasing your conscious awareness, which is a really powerful way to take charge of how you're feeling and how you're thinking. So noticing in the moment as soon as you can, and it might be you notice it within a, mo a minute, and it might be that you notice it half an hour later and you've had half an hour stewing over a phone call that you've received back then. 
Uh, it doesn't matter. The key is to just catch it as soon as you can. And the moment you do, take a breath. Breathe into your belly. And that just helps your brain get a bit of oxygen so that you can make a useful choice now because your, your choice is around how do I want to be feeling instead. Very simple. And it might be I want to be feeling calm. I might want to feel in control, whatever that feeling is. And then the third thing you're going to do is to shift your state. And there are lots of ways you can do this. Uh, you can take a walk. You can go grab some water. Uh, just stepping away from your computer screen can be very, very useful. What I want to show you is something called the mood mover, which is a slightly crazy technique, but a, an extremely effective technique for shifting the chemistry in your body out of that adre adrenaline state or whatever that might be that's feeling un unresourceful and into a good feeling serotonin state. Because you can do this if you know which parts of your body to activate and what and uh, and what to focus on. I'm going to show you how to do that now. As I say, it's a, a little crazy, but it's very uh, very effective. So let's go have a look at the mood mover. Okay, let's go with the mood mover. The first thing I'm going to invite you to do is take a moment to recall a time when you were stressed because I just want you to have a moment to sense what it's like in your body when that is happening. And so it could be a moment from yesterday, a week ago, a month ago, a year ago, it doesn't matter. But I want you to think of a time when you were feeling stressed in some way that did not feel resourceful for you. And take yourself back there for a moment and just notice what is happening in your body. Is there tension in your shoulders, your chest, your belly, maybe your hands clench, maybe your head feels like it's going to boil, whatever that might be, noticing how that feels in your body, what the sensations are. We're not going to hang out there for long, I just want you to kind of clock it. What is it like in your body? How does it feel right now as you remember it? And I'm assuming that it would be okay for you to change that, that it would be good and useful to feel differently. And so that, if that's the case, then we're going to do the mood mover. So if you're not standing up already, I'm going to invite you to stand up. And ideally, uh, you could be perched on the edge of a chair as well, but ideally you just want to plant your feet and be really steady on your feet or um, on your sit bones. And the first thing we're going to do is just shake out the hands, loose, loose, loose on the ends of your arms. So they're just shaking like this, loose, loose, loose. And then move them up to above your shoulders. And then you're going to move your eyes up to the ceiling and turn up the corners of your mouth. So looking up at the ceiling means you cannot have a serious thought. Our brain just does not do serious thinking when we're looking straight up, which is a pretty good thing to know. And when you turn up the corners of your mouth, serotonin is automatically released into your body. That is a natural biological response. And that is the happy, happy, joy, joy neurotransmitter, the feel-good hormone. And we're going to do one more thing, just when you thought this couldn't get more ridiculous. <laughs> we're going to take a nice breath in, and we're going to still look up, still turn up the corners of the mouth, and we're going to go, yes, 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 do it with me. Yes, 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 Arms relax down, giving the whole body a shake out for a minute. And just taking a moment to feel how you feel in your body now. And notice, is there any sign of the old response or those old sensations at all? Or have they gone? And most people will say they have gone, gone. Like there is no sign of those sensations at all. And that is because you have just shifted the chemistry in your whole body. And it's like dominoes, ch -ch 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 -ch, new state, new chemistry, out of adrenaline, out of cortisol, and into the state of serotonin, feeling good, feeling calmer, feeling more comfortable. If for some reason there's a little bit of tension still there, just repeat what we just did. Literally just do the whole thing again for 30, 45 seconds, something like that and notice how you feel then. 
So this is that quick. It's brilliant when you're feeling particularly wound up and I'm going to give you some tips in a moment for how to utilize this the best. Okay, so now you know about the mood mover, you have a really concrete way of exchanging your state and you'll notice um, it's very effective and one of the reasons I wanted to share it with you here is because it's a very good uh, antidote to very when we're particularly wound up. So if you find that you get um, uh, very stressed or very uh, annoyed in certain situations, the mood mover tends to be quite a powerful way of being able to shift that uh, energy into a more positive state. So these are your three steps, 30 seconds. You notice when you're feeling less than resourceful, breathe. How do I want to be feeling instead? And then shift your state. And you can do the mood mover with the yes, yes, yes silent in your head, okay? You don't have to make all that noise. Um, the, the key thing is to do it and uh, if you share it with the people around you then they will know what you're doing and laugh as well and uh, everybody gets to feel better uh, and then it's much more convenient for you because you can do one when you need to so yeah we have a lot of clients who share it around and, um, and it, it's kind of useful for everybody okay so what uh, what people sometimes say at this point is you know I haven't really got time for this and I think I probably talked to this a little bit earlier when I said, can you really afford to not be in a better feeling state in the various situations uh, you are in, in your day? Uh, and the deal is, is that if you take these few moments, you will have a much more productive day. You will be able to think straight. That report that you've got 30 minutes to finish because the deadline just got brought forward is probably going to be um, a more enjoyable experience for you and a better quality report if you take 30 seconds to calm your body down and help your brain think properly and get your breathing sorted so that you can go ahead and just finish it. It doesn't have to be a drama, but we get used to the drama and we think that's just how it is. Well, be the flow because it's not. <laughs> So the difference that makes the difference, you now know that it is uh, very much about that you are in charge and that you can take control of your internal responses and how you feel on the inside so you can more easily and effectively influence what's going on around you. And my experience of, of being able to do this is that it really helps you gain confidence in yourself that you can be trusting yourself to say the right thing at the right time and that you can be feeling yourself in your own energy and not be affected by other people's moods and stress and, and words and so on so easily and just allowing you to bring your best self to situations and people. Um, you really can be the flow. You get to choose how you want to be feeling in any situation and that starts by making your state the most important thing in your day. And, you know, I notice that um, I, I see the, the difference it can make with clients when they put tools into action. And um, Nick here is a great example of that and a, a great example of how, you know, we can't separate our personal journey from our professional journey. And when we make changes to how we're feeling and responding to situations at work, it often flows into our home life and to, uh, as well. And that's a bonus, right? And um, and Nick is a great example of that, but also somebody who is great at taking new tools with both hands and putting them into practice. And he really accelerates his own journey by doing this. And so, you know, it's all good in theory, but we must practice. So, what one thing are you going to do straight away? Have a think about that. What one thing do you want to put in place right away that you feel is going to make the biggest difference to you? And if you're like me, I'm a bit of a post-it note queen. I like notes to remind me for just about everything. Uh, write this on a post-it note. Make it live. Make it uh, easy for you to connect with and remember because, of course, at, at a conscious level, you're really, this is, that's the level at which you're learning and putting these new things into place. So your conscious mind often likes a bit of a reminder um, until you've got it running unconsciously. 
And we love to help people like you uh, run your brain on purpose um, and to make deep life altering, life altering personal and professional changes and the kind that stick, that really sustainable change which I'm very passionate about. And I remember one of my earliest coaching clients, um, Catherine in the UK, who was um, really stressed at the time and she really wanted to be working less hours and, and didn't want to take a drop in income. And I still remember the look on her face when I said, okay, well, let's make that happen. Um, she was not very convinced at that early stage. Uh, but we addressed her stress response first and helped her really settle her nervous system down and then helped her set some new goals. And I think it was about six weeks between when I saw her for coaching and when she was in a new role and she was working four days a week and she was earning the same money. Uh, so we really can start to make these adjustments and we help people do this with uh, workshops, retreats, online programs and one-to-one -one coaching. And uh, one of the things that um, we are specialising in more and more now also is our, our wellness programs and that is really about wellness and performance. Uh, the blend between um, being able to uh, be your most healthy self and also uh, your most effective self. And uh, we also have an increasing range of products, so you're welcome to go shopping. And certainly check out what's online right now in terms of our, um, our offerings. Working with business owners uh, has a really um, wonderful depth to it in a, in a way because we are working with uh, the leadership that is then cascading down through the business and the work with uh, Fred Saw has been a really great example of this. And so don't underestimate the difference you can make to the people around you just by uh, looking at how you want to be experiencing um, yourself and your uh, the various situations you're involved in. It really does uh, have a wonderful ripple out effect. And uh, we love that ripple out effect to be a very, bright, uh, very broad and wide and you might want to go check out our uh, mission around this because we have a pretty big um, vision for how we want to influence the world and help people enjoy their lives. And that kind of reminds me of that aha moment I talked about earlier actually when we were flying into Frankfurt. And you might remember me saying that we were coming up out of the turbulence thankfully. And we came up through the cloud and as we broke through the clouds in the rain, spread out before me was the sun streaming across an endless blue sky. It was unforgettable. It was just so beautiful. And in that moment, I realized that no matter what weather was going on down below, the sun was always up there shining. It was always beautiful, calm blue sky and sunshine. And that it never went away. It was always there, no matter what mucky stuff was going on down the bottom. And it was some time later that I realized the same is true for us. And that we have this beautiful stillness and light inside us, that joy is inside every one of us. If only we seek, hold and nurture it. And I know the feeling of that feeling like it's a million miles away. But actually it's right here inside you. And the question is not how do I get there, how do I find it? It's just how can you come from this place in yourself more easily and more often? And we absolutely love helping our clients work out how to do that. So there you have it, my take on getting out of the stress response, out of stress junkie mode and into your own new rhythm. 
So be sure to put some of these tools and strategies in place. That is what will make the difference, of course. And be sure to jump onto the website startwithyou.co to find out more about what we have happening right now. It is great to have you part of the Start With You community and I look forward to keeping in touch. Bye for now.